Hello, and this is a requested video on what kind of rubbers are used in gas masks and respirators, and I'm going to be covering the three major types of rubbers in this video. However, there's more than three types, and some of them can be mixes, so some of these may not be 100% of one of a kind of rubber, but it should give you a good idea. So we're going to start off with latex. Nearly all the Soviet masks are made out of latex or something very similar to latex. And latex is a very cheap rubber to use on respirators. Um, it's got the ability to be quite thin and flexible. Obviously with all rubbers, the thicker you cut them, the less flexible they'll be. But they'll be thicker. Um, but you can do things to reinforce the latex. So for example, with a GP5, if I turn it inside out, you'll see that um, despite being latex, like where the Tissot tubes are, they're a bit more rigid. They sort of hold a shape a lot more. And if you think of Soviet masks like the SHMS, um, in the PMG, they've got kind of the more rigid latex bit of the front to keep the face structure of the mask looking as it looks. But they're primarily latex. So, the advantages to latex is it's very cheap to make if you're mass producing respirators. Latex, you know, is good enough for that. It's reasonably strong against lots of sorts of chemicals. Not massively strong, um, but okay. So, you know, the mask can hold out for a decent amount of time under chemical pressure from things like blister agents and ammonia. But it's not going to last forever, nothing does, but it's not going to fall apart really quickly either. So, latex is a good material to make a mask from. The advantage is being it's cheap, so obviously you can make lots of masks, and it's strong enough. Now, of course, if you've got a latex allergy, a latex mask is not good for you. Um, and I suppose latex masks could tear if they're made thin, but the Soviet masks actually are very springy and kind of strong. Another thing is you can stretch them as well, like so with the Soviet mask, you can have the shape small in the wearer's head, so they have to stretch the mask to get it over their head, where it then seals to make an airtight seal. So, latex is a fairly good material to make masks from, as said, because of those points, but it's nothing really special. Okay, next we have silicon. Now, um, 3M really like to use silicon in their more expensive range of masks. The cheap ones, they don't use silicon. So, what's the advantages of silicon? Primarily, silicon is soft. Um, it's a very comfortable, soft rubber. Obviously, I can't demonstrate this on camera, but feeling that, it's very soft and comfortable. So, that's one of the great things with silicon. If you want a mask to be really comfortable, you make it out of silicon. Another thing with silicon, as you can see here, it's slightly transparent. Um, so, you should be able to see my thumb behind it. Now, you can make silicon very transparent, actually, um, and some panoramic lens masks, like the MCU, have tried silicon for the lenses. However, there's problems with silicon. It's not great. So, while it's comfortable and you can see through it, the issue is, if you're going to use it as a see-through uh, sort of thing on a mask, silicon discolours over time. So, not long after you've made the mask, it might start being blurry or look weird for your see-through lens if you made it out of silicon. Another major flaw with silicon is it's very weak against blister agents and sort of corrosive chemicals. So again, it's a gas mask or respirator to protect your life from hazardous chemicals, but it can't stand up well against hazardous chemicals. So that's an issue with silicon. So silicon is much better if it's like a cushion layer on the inside of a mask made from another form of rubber. Whatever that form of rubber is, it's not great for an outside bit of a mask. The US M40 series had a massive problem with the MCU as well. Where because they made the masks from silicon, it turns out they're not very good masks for actual chemical resistance. They had to make a second skin out of butyl rubber, which is the next kind of rubber we're going to cover. Um, so you basically had to have a hood to go over the mask to protect the mask. So again, it would have been much better to have made the mask from butyl rubber in the first place and then put the inside out of silicon. Another issue of silicon that hopefully I'll demonstrate here is it won't keep its shape that well, which can be a good or bad thing, but it's often bad on masks because if you don't tighten the straps exactly right, the silicon can fold in on itself and then not make a good seal. So let me demonstrate that with this mask. Okay, so at the moment that's fairly good, but if I start tightening this, that might be starting to happen now. Let me tighten this back a bit as well. And I can't really get that to happen too much here, but what will happen is the mask will cave in a bit too much onto my face. And when the rubber starts caving in, yeah. it's still making an airtight seal at the moment, but that can, can compromise the seal. Now, I did a video recently on a Chinese respirator, um, the pewter gas mask, and if you look at that one, that's a very good example of why silicon is not a good idea to use it to make the outer structure of a mask in certain places simply because what can basically happen is that 
when you're trying to wear the mask, you tighten the straps too much and the mask can do something like that or, you know, bend like that. It will bend somehow and it won't make an airtight seal anymore. So that's a big problem with silicon. While it's very comfortable, I would really only advise silicon be used on the inside of a mask where it will provide comfortable face cushioning, not where it's needed to keep the shell of the mask in the correct shape or actually to resist chemicals. So great on the inside of a mask silicon, not so great if it's on the outside of a mask. Now we have perhaps the best uh, type of rubber you can use on respirators, as I said there's more than these three, but this is probably the best one, it's called butyl rubber, as in B-U-T-Y-L. And this is a completely synthetic rubber, it doesn't come from a natural source, it's grown in a sort of that kind of rubber. Now the good thing against butyl rubber is that it's very strong against chemicals, so what that means is that butyl obviously, unlike silicon for example, which is the complete opposite, is very good at resisting blister agents and sort of things like ammonia. It's not going to eat away at the mask. Well, it will, it will just take much longer. So in terms of protection, butyl is the best for the outside of a mask. Now, the other good thing of butyl is it's flexible enough for the most part, but not super rigid. So what that means is you kind of get around the problem you have with silicon and sort of latex, where the mask can fold and be manipulated, but at the same time it's not going to completely lose its shape if you apply a bit of pressure to it. Whereas obviously if you imagine a GP5 or some of the silicon masks, they fold far too easily. So what that means is, obviously you can also make it more rigid and thin depending on how you want it. So around the outside here, it's rigid. Around some of the other bits, it's not so much. So that's a really good thing about butyl rubber. So let's put that on. So as you can see with the S10, it's comfortable enough. If it had silicon on the inside, yeah, it'd be a bit more comfortable, but the butyl's fine. But the main point, as I was saying, is it's a very good rubber in terms of chemical resistance, which is what you want. Um, obviously, you don't want a mask that is going to, like silicon, that's going to start failing, um, especially with valves and things like that. Even if you're having a silicon mask, you probably want butyl valves in it. You want a mask that's obviously going to stand up to chemical expo exposure, which butyl rubber is going to last the longest at doing. And the other thing, obviously, with it is that you want it to um, be comfortable. And butyl isn't too uncomfortable. So you've got a very good mix of butyl. You've got something that's comfortable enough while you're wearing it, but also is going to offer very good protection against chemicals. So butyl is probably the best choice of rubber out there for respirators at the moment. So. If you're shopping for a mask, look for one that's made of butyl rubber if you can find out what's in them. Most military masks, like all the Avon ones, the Airboss C4, um, they're all made of butyl simply because it's the rubber now people know to use if they're making a good respirator. However, like I said, there are silicon masks out there, and silicon isn't bad when used appropriately. As I said, if you wanted to improve a mask like the S10, what you'd actually have is a cushion around the inside of it that would be made out of actual... Um, so see where this rubber is here, although they've made the butyl softer here, it's still butyl. If that was silicon, again you can't see it all that well, if that sort of face seal was made out of silicon, the mask would be even more comfortable to wear and the silicon's not at risk of being you know, destroyed or deteriorated because it's on the inside of the mask. Again, the silicon would actually fail faster than the other bits, but how they've done this, if you see, is it's just literally a rubber flap, like a normal peripheral seal but it just sits kind of folded to make the you know seal, which is a really good way of doing it. So, as the video said, butyl, like that's used in the Avon masks and most other modern military masks, is the best rubber you can use so far that we know of, because it's resistant to chemicals, doesn't tear easily, and it's, you know, fairly comfortable. Not as comfortable as silicon or latex, necessarily, but it lasts longer. Latex isn't bad, you know, you could do a lot worse than latex, but silicon I'd really avoid. Again, if you want it on just something like a 3M dust mask kind of thing, silicon is fine. But when it comes to lots of bigger respirators, silicon is just going to cause more trouble than it's worth because the mask is going to deteriorate much faster. So you're going to have a mask failure sooner than with other masks. If my World War II masks were made from silicon, they certainly wouldn't work, the ones that still work. Uh, and obviously, I say there's lots of issues where with some of them the strap harnesses are in positions where if you tighten it too much or whatever the silicon can fold in and then compromise the seal of the mask and you know if you use silicon eyepieces for example they're more um, easier to be destroyed by chemical weapons which is kind of what your things meant to protect you from harsh chemicals 
and obviously they can discolour, so even if it's still a good seal, you might suddenly have an orange tint to everything, which isn't what you want. Without certs like this, you choose to put them on for a reason. You don't want your mask to suddenly get a coloured out cert without you, uh, you know, wanting to do it and not being able to remove it. So, there you go. Um, butyl rubber is easily the best, and then latex is okay, but personally I'd avoid silicon unless it's just a mask you're doing using for a bit of DIY.